Welcome back to the Game Collection. I am Super Derek, and this is Shenmue. Shenmue is a game that refuses to be categorized. It does so many things so well, you could almost consider it a sampler pack of different genres. It's almost like a life simulator where you explore a town, talk to people, get a job, and interact with the objects that make up the environment. There are even calendar, time, and seasonal weather systems in the game, and this is from back in 2000. Shenmue started off its life as a Virtua Fighter RPG for the Sega Saturn, starring Akira. Gradually, the development team moved away from the Virtua Fighter universe, and Akira became Ryo. As a result, however, there are still clear design similarities between the two characters, including dominant eyebrows and matching scars on their left cheeks. Also gradually, it was becoming clear that the Saturn was shaping up to be a commercial flop, so production was halted and later resumed as Shenmue was slated for the Dreamcast. Shenmue starts off in the middle of a crisis. The Hazuki family estate has been invaded by a Chinese martial arts master, Lan Di. Within the first couple of minutes of the game, Ryo's father is murdered in front of his eyes and Ryo is powerless to stop it. They killed my father, right in front of me. I will have my revenge. In Shenmue, you play as 18-year-old Ryo, who attempts to track down Lan Di by exploring 1986 Yokosuka, Japan. This hunt takes you from dealing with thugs in the underbelly of Yamanose to racing forklifts in the Yokosuka Waterfront Warehouse District. I only recently started playing through Shenmue for the first time, despite having heard about it for years. While I do regret not playing it sooner, I also feel like I'm now in somewhat of a unique position where I can review the game with some perspective free of nostalgia. And let me start off by saying that this game is absolutely still worth playing, even if you've never played it before. The game was leading the way during its time in ways that only now games like Skyrim and L.A. Noir are beginning to finally catch on to, and as a result, a lot of the core mechanics of the game are still relevant. That said, however, this game does have its rough points. One of the first things you'll notice while playing Shinru is the way that the game controls. I think that if there was one design flaw with the Dreamcast, it would have to be its lack of a second analog stick. It's probably due to this that the players are left to control the camera with the left analog stick, and movement is also controlled using the D-pad, which is also on the left. It feels a bit stiff, and I found myself getting stuck on walls and objects easily because of Ryo's poor turning radius. But you can get used to the controls after a couple of hours of playing the game, and from there it's pretty much smooth sailing. After playing for a short while, you get into a confrontation with these thugs sporting some awesome hair. I'm getting flashbacks from Kenka Bancho just thinking about it. At this point, the use of the D-pad all begins to make sense when you enter into a free fight mode, which is a sort of Tekken-style fighting system, complete with combos and special moves. Between fights, you can train Ryo by repeating the special moves. The more you use them, the more they level up and stronger they become. Shenmue was also one of the first games to place a heavy emphasis on quick time events, which, for better or worse, has impacted the way games are played today. As a result, Shenmue players were made able to interact with many of the game's several cinematics. Now, in order to track down your father's murderer, you need to talk to people around town who can give you leads to investigate. Each person you speak with in the game is completely voice acted, which was unheard of at the time. I remember when The Elder Scrolls Oblivion came out, they used to tout this accomplishment on the PS3 and the 360, but Shinmu managed it years ago on previous generation hardware back in the year 2000. On the other hand, most of the voice acting is kind of abysmal and awkward. That day? That day? Uh, the day of the incident? I heard about it from Nozomi. It must be hard for you. No, I'm fine. 
It would have been nice to have the option to change the audio to Japanese with subtitles instead. Although I'm not entirely certain that would be possible, considering that the game spans three discs already. On the other hand, some of the dialogue in the game is actually memorably hilarious, and to a forgiving player, the acting might almost come off as charming. Do you know any places around here that are hiring? Son, do I look gainfully employed to you? Come and see me if you're interested in becoming homeless. I see. Thank you. Now this might just be me, but when playing through Shenmue, it gave me the sense of surreality that's hard to describe. Like, the objects and characters in the game hold secrets, and like there might be something magical or supernatural going on in the game, but it's never made clear to the player. There's something about the mood of the game that just draws you in, makes you want to investigate. Because of this, I can't wait to get my hands on and play Shenmue 2. The visuals of Shenmue, much like most Dreamcast games, were outstanding for the time, and have aged considerably well. At the time, game critics called Shenmue the best looking game ever released on a console. And the game could look even better if using the Dreamcast VGA box, which allows the connection of the Dreamcast to a computer monitor or HDTV displaying it in a very crisp 480p, which was a huge leap forward from the standard compositor RF. Shenmue's production cost something like $70 million, and it would have been pretty much impossible for Sega to have seen a profit come out of this game. Despite that, we were lucky enough to get a sequel in 2003. In 2009, Ryo was also made a playable character in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. On the internet, there are murmurs of production of a Shenmue 3, but so far, Sega hasn't really said anything about it, and Ryo's voice actor has denied having worked on a third Shenmue project. Very recently though, Sega has purchased Atlas, a company responsible for the development and localization of a ton of gem RPGs, such as the Persona and E-Train Odyssey series. Personally, I don't think we've seen the last of Shenmue. Shenmue is currently only available on the Dreamcast. A complete copy should run you about 20 bucks. Shenmue was ahead of its time. It weaves a great story and draws you in with fun action sequences. All in all, it's a pretty short game though, clocking in at around 20 hours at most. It's a must play and a must own for any Dreamcast collector. And that's why it's got a spot in the game collection. What? You want some more? Okay, well, you could check out one of these videos. They're kinda cool. Oh, and since you're already clicking on stuff anyway, maybe you should click on this button. You know, since you're checking out my new videos anyway, right? <laughs>